How's it going there, folks? Uh, welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster out here about 9.30 p.m. here, California time, March 28th, 2024. Latest activity shows a 1.5 here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. We'll get to the rest of this earthquake activity here in just a few minutes. I'm going to cover out here the uh, space weather activity here first, where we did see a decent X-flare kickoff here earlier uh, in the day. That coming off of an X 1.1. Uh, now, there looks like there was another M flare here recently as well. But that's a, uh, a definitely a decent flare that uh, kicked off there earlier today. From our de uh, departing sunspot, 3615. Now, it's still a ginormous sunspot area, very complex. And that is the culprit here of the X flare and the recent M flare activity. Unfortunately, with the Earth uh, being out of position here, uh, any CME that was produced will not be geo-effective. At least I don't think it will. They haven't put out any newer updated models yet, but that's a ways off there for it to be, uh, you know, even get a glancing blow from that thing. So uh, no CME, or directed anyway. Uh, still seeing some X flare or uh, some flaring activity. Back behind it, there's not a whole lot. Uh, so this region here will be out of sight, out of mind. Uh, probably by tomorrow morning, so we'll, we'll see what uh, the far side has to bring us. I, I was looking at this last night. There's not a whole lot going on here in terms of far side sunspots. Looks like there's a couple uh, decent ones. We'll get a better view of this area right here uh, here in a couple days. But uh, for now, we'll just uh, deal with some quiet conditions there as far as the solar weather activity goes once 3615 is out of sight here but for now we still have a 25 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 75 percent chance and c flare probability of course 99 percent chance here uh proton event about 15 percent i don't think um this shut off too many protons here in the earth direction really not seeing anything affecting the uh ionosphere at least at the polar regions for now all right, and no major roars here in the forecast. All right, earthquake activity. See what we got here. Anything major going on? We did have some recent activity out here in the northern Mariana Islands area. Seen uh, a handful of earthquakes within about, uh, oh, 10 minutes of each other, maybe 20 minutes of each other. Uh, did have a couple fives right here very shallow earthquake activity that does look like it added strain a little bit further down here along the trench with this pretty deep 4.4 that deep earthquake coming in after the shallow activity so we are getting some uh some movement across the mariana trench here i'll definitely keep an eye on that as far as anything major going on across the rest of the globe that's some of the newer activity if you look back here across the tonga trench let me bring this back down here. It looks like we're missing some earthquakes. It's going to be right about here, last 24 hours, because we did have this uh, this earthquake last night into the Tonga Trench area, 200 kilometers deep. But since then, things have gone awfully quiet. So we're at a standstill here now. Uh, the southwestern corner here of the Pacific Plate, and also up around the uh, Kuro Kamachaka and the Japan Trench, pretty quiet. Keep an eye here on the center section. Looks like that's where it wants to move currently. Uh, typical clustering going on here across the Indonesia Islands area. Really not seeing anything major for now. Um, the Alaska area looks like an earthquake, fairly recent one, a 1.4 up there in Alaska. And a three-pointer stirring up here. Where was that? Looks like that's outside of the Anchorage area, uh, northwest of the uh, Valdez area. Normal movement is very typical up there across the Aleutian Trench and uh, the Alaska area. Nothing really major going on. A handful of earthquakes here across the Marian or the uh, I was going to say the Mariana Trench. Let's hope it's not over here. Mount Rainier, very small earthquake activity. Uh, doesn't look like it's associated with the summit region. This is just on the western edge here of the uh, Cascade Mountains. Northern California, nothing going on aside from the typical uh, Clear Lake volcanic field activity there associated with the uh, hydrothermal operations. The geo geo plants out here. There's a um, quite a few of these um in operation and there's a whole process involved that uh, creates some earthquakes out there 
creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, looks like a lot of ones out here. Really nothing major going on here across the state of California. Very minimal. 1.6 out there. See what we got for the 2.5 and above map. That uh, just removes pretty much all the earthquakes here off of the map. So a lot of microquake activity out here today, but really in a sense there's not uh, really not a whole lot. This is very typical on any California day. Texas area out here around the Pecos, Texas. A lot of oil fields out here continuing to get hit. The last 30 days of earthquake activity shows about 385 earthquakes here in the Pecos, Texas area. Again, quite a few oil fields in operation out there. Uh, Illinois up here. Looks like they did have a little earthquake earlier this afternoon uh, near Germantown. 23 kilometers deep. Kind of an odd earthquake out there. Uh, let's see. Looks like a few folks did report feeling it scattered out here across the region. Of course, earthquake activity in this area of the world of uh, the states. Uh, these smaller quakes can be felt much broader than compared to like California. A different type of uh, uh, rock layers out here. But that's fairly deep as well. 23 kilometers. Let me check out the, the um, hazard zone here. It is right outside the New Madrid seismic zone, but there's a couple separate uh, fault systems up here that do run north out of this area. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but uh, uh, they do produce some earthquakes here on occasion. The rest of the country, what we've got going on here across uh, Connecticut, 2.1, 1.6, 1.8, all literally within minutes of each other earlier this morning. Kind of an odd deal here. But uh, if you notice, let me go back to the last seven days or so. We've seen a handful of earthquakes up here recently. Looks like they may have removed some. I thought they had one uh, up here somewhere. Huh. But uh, yeah, uh, a little bit of activity. Really nothing big going on. But uh, this area can see some earthquakes. Some big ones up north here. Uh, and of course in the Canada. But for now, we've got some uh, very small microquake activity out there. Movement around the South America region here, handful of earthquakes. Doesn't look like anything major going on. Some older movement quakes there, deep into the Peru Chile Trench. And a handful of quakes here across the area of the Middle America Trench. There is a 4.2 showing up on the globe here. That's kind of in an odd area. Let me see if I can pull this up. Uh, it is by the uh, being reported by the EMSC model here, so I just want to see what this one is. It's over here in the Gulf of Mexico, kind of an odd earthquake. Uh, that one coming in earlier today, 10 kilometers deep for a 4.2. USGS not really picking up on it, but uh, that's just kind of an odd area to see any earthquake activity out here. Uh, the big island of Hawaii, what we got going on way out here. 3.2, very shallow earthquake here. Away from the big island, looks like a surface quake. Well, at least the oceanic uh, crust earthquake there, about 10 kilometers deep. That's a defaulted depth that they use. That was, uh, looks like earlier this afternoon, as far as any general movement across the volcanoes, it looks fairly quiet up here across the Kilauea volcano. Only a, a handful of smaller quakes there, really nothing major going on there across the region. see what we got for the Atlantic fairly quiet some older movement quakes out there I was just checking out Iceland real quick uh, earlier and it's still erupting at least one active crater out here creating uh, you know quite the spectacular flow it does look like the second one's going as well let's check that out should be at least three of these in uh, operation operation as far as eruption goes um, there, it seems like there's periods of uh, calmness, at least when it calms down here slightly, but this is still an ongoing deal for day number 12, I think. Tomorrow will be day number 13. Coming up on two weeks here this, that this has been going on. Uh, really no major change. Really haven't seen any uh, major update. Let me check the Icelandic Met Office. Yeah, this was from uh, a couple days ago here. Really no new change. I just kind of gave a, uh, a map of where the activity is um, at. That's kind of a slow deal. And you can see it here. 
really hasn't advanced further, just kind of been stacking up on each other here, filling up this region uh, with lava layers. And uh, it says right here, mostly on top of the lava bed that formed during the first days of the eruption. So we'll continue to watch it. Really no major change, just continued free flow from the areas below up to the surface. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot of severe weather going on now, but it looks like maybe day five, day six as we head into Monday and also into Tuesday. we got a severe weather threat out here across Texas, Oklahoma, and a good portion of other states out here, including Illinois region. So heads up. Um, and far as the cloud cover goes on the eclipse date oh man i keep checking this and it's not looking good this is a model by uh, pivotal weather this one actually shows the totality line i kind of like this one uh, and this is a gfs model that uh, shows a potential cloud cover on the 8th of april when the eclipse is supposed to happen uh, technically i think it's right about that's 18z i think it's right about here now, <clears throat> last night when I was checking a, a different model, it showed this low pressure sy system and this frontal boundary very close to being out of here, right? I was hoping it would hurry up and just do what it needs to do and then create some clearing here. Now the cloud cover is gonna be in the blue area, not uh, the white. This is gonna be open this here, clearing zero clouds. But uh, this model looks a lot more aggressive in seeing a broad area of cloud cover across the entire region here of the totality line. And that is a bummer. It is a ways out, but these models have been consistent with predicting some type of weather pattern here uh, the day before, the day of, and the day after uh, the eclipse. Uh, and that's normally not good. If we have one storm coming in on one day, things could change. But this is staying fairly consistent here with uh, a, a decent amount of moisture coming in associated with the low. Uh, let me show you guys here. Uh, this isn't, I don't think that's going to go all the way out there. Six, almost. We can bring back the older run. And I'll show you guys right about here. Look at all that moisture coming in from that low pressure. That definitely not good. Now, just because it doesn't show a lot of rain or a lot of rain here in this area, this is still a lot of cloud cover uh, that's going to be across this area. So we'll continue to watch it. I mean, that's really all we can do. We can't change, you know, we can't prevent Mother Nature from doing what Mother Nat Nature wants to do out here. Uh, springtime, you know, always spells some potential moisture and thunderstorms and severe weather out here in this area of the world. And it just happens to look like it's going to fall on the eclipse date. And again, that was one weather model. Um, I could use another one here, the COD. I think these guys are going to be roughly about the same average cloud cover. This one's not quite set up yet either, all the way um, to the, um, yeah, that'd be about the 8th, right about here. We're looking at about that time here for the eclipse on Monday, April 8th. That's the Z time. And look, look at that pattern. There's just a lot of clarity, or a lot of cloud cover here. On this map, the clouds are going to be white, 100% coverage here. And very similar to the other one, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's looking more and more likely that this is going to play out, but it's not set in stone yet. I believe uh, on Friday, right? The Friday before the eclipse there on, on Monday, we should have a pretty good idea of what the weather is going to be like, whether the system is going to hurry up and scoot on by or if it's just going to continue to flow in this moisture here. Look at that. It's tapping into a lot of subtropical moisture we checked that out last night and that is all associated with the um, uh, southern pacific jet let me show you guys let me bring up just the north american plate here upper air dynamics the jet stream here pattern is an odd one it's definitely definitely uh 
it's set up here to create a lot of weather events um, here in April, I believe. So April 8th, right about here. Look at this. We're getting that polar jet pattern, the northern track, joining down here with the subtropical jet. And uh, these cutoff lows tap into this moisture, and it just creates rainfall after rainfall in this area. And it looks like, you know, it's there's no clarity here. There's no... You know, say if this was just a low pressure system and it's going to be out of here soon. But as long as this jet is in this pattern right here and low pressure across this area, it's just going to make a lot of cloud cover, a lot of storminess. And it couldn't come at a worse time there for the eclipse. It looks like it's going to hang around for quite a while. Look at that April 10th. Uh, maybe after, no, uh, maybe towards the middle of April might clear up a little bit. But uh, yeah, I. You know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but again, it's not set in stone, right? So don't go canceling any plans or anything like that. If you have them, I still have my plan set up. I will know in advance, uh, you know, about three days beforehand if I'm going to cancel my plans out here because I do not plan on heading out to uh, cover the eclipse if it's going to be cloudy. It doesn't make sense. If it's going to be rainy and cloudy, it's really not worth it to drive 24 hours out here in the... Uh, you know, see four minutes of darkness and then get back in the car and head home. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Can't get any total eclipse pictures. Can't see any stars when it happens. Not, uh, you know, definitely not something I want to go through if it's, if it's cloudy. All right. Um, that's all I got for right now here, folks. Um, seismograph stations look fairly quiet. A little earthquake there around the Philippines. Doesn't look like it's coming in yet. There's, like I say, a little spike. Um, Yellowstone National Park. Let me check this. I forgot them. I normally like to check it out. Doesn't look like there's any earthquake activity that I can see. There's still one little signal of an earthquake. That was earlier. Uh, but it doesn't look like the USGS picked up on it. It's not going to be this little, sp this little earthquake. It's something that happened over here. Looks like maybe a two-pointer or something over here. But... Uh, they've they've had earthquake activity out here before, and I've messaged the uh, scientists there in charge. I can't remember his name. I don't know if it's Ken or someone else. I talked to a lot of people out there on the USGS side. But uh, they're limited on the amount of seismograph stations out here across the western side of the park. So a lot of times earthquakes that come in, and they can't pinpoint exactly where it's at due to the uh, limited data that comes in. All right. Have a good night here, folks. Tomorrow is Friday. That's a good thing, right? Friday, Friday. I'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the uh, Friday morning update. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday night, folks. We'll, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow.